Hey there, gang. It's your old pals, Uncle Hank and Kippy. We got some big news, folks. Are You Garbage is coming to the Gas Digital Network. Ooh. That is correct. Me and old Kippy are joining the Gas Digital family, baby, and we could not be more excited. Yeah, guys, this is fucking awesome. And uh, But don't worry, not much is changing. If you listen to the podcast, uh, it's still available free wherever you listen. The most, 15, the most recent 15 episodes are available free on iTunes, on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. But the catalog of Are You Garbage will be available on gasdigitalnetwork.com. But don't you worry your little garbage hearts, ladies and gentlemen, because if you go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, and use promo code AYG. Woo! You know what, what, that, what, you know what that gets you, big man? Talk to me. That gets you a 14-day free trial, and you'll save $1.50 a month Come as on. long as you're signed up. It's going to be a hoot. You'd be crazy not to sign up for that. That's savings right there. And in this economy, we can all use to save a couple of bucks. So spend it wisely, <laughs> folks. Not only do you get the catalog of AYG, you also get the past catalog of Legion of Skanks. A real ass podcast, a believe you me with Michael Bisping. Irish goodbye. Irish goodbye. You get all the shows on the network. It's gonna be fucking worth it, guys. Sign up. Use promo code AYG. Don't be a piece of trash. And gang, don't forget to check out the live stream every Tuesdays and Fridays at gasdigitalnetwork.com. If you want to watch it in HD, high quality, sign up for the network. You will not regret it. Those live streams will be out three days before everybody else gets to see them. So you're the first one to smell the garbage, baby. Sign up today! Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? The show where we sit down with your favorite comedians and find out if they grew up classy or if they're complete trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on yet another gorgeous day here in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Fourth of July is this weekend. Thinking about doing a brisket, maybe some ribs. Mom's making potato salad. It's going to be some clean living. My co-host back in the New York groove up there in the uptown, uptown, Washington Heights, holding it down, keeping the block on lock. Let me tell you something, gang. Now that the holiday's coming, Fourth of July, the next time you reach for a best pal, go ahead and make it a kippy. He tastes great, doesn't fill you up. Give it up for my good pal. Kevin James Ryan, everybody. <laughs> now 30% more forehead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> happy to be here, gang. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, back here in New York, but leaving tomorrow, heading down to the old Bucks County, Pennsylvania, baby. Really? You're going to hide out there while your mom's down the shore? Oh, yeah. It's a good Smart it's, move. It's like three-card Monty with me, dude. Wherever she is, I'm not, you know? Like in the uh, Underground Railroad from the Corona over here. <laughs> it's just I wouldn't too, go to fucking Jersey, I'll tell you that. It's too hot down here. It's too hot in the city, dude. They're lighting off fireworks <laughs> like it's fucking going out of style, dude. I haven't had a good night's sleep in six weeks. It's tough. But... Uh, guys, uh, thanks for listening. If you haven't already, please make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Also, subscribe on YouTube. The full video is available there as well. Very nice, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, very special guest that we have here with us today. We're so happy to have this gentleman. He's been an extremely requested get. We got him. You loved him. You wanted him. Here we are with him. We know him from Jump Street back in the old Raven Lounge days, Philadelphia comedy scene. Coming up on the run, baby. He's the co-host of the Dad Meat Podcast. He's a tall drink of water. He's a good-looking kid. Comes from good stock. But the big question in everybody's mind today, is he garbage? I would have to guess yes. Give it up for Mr. Tim Butterly, everybody. Thanks for having me, boys. You're leaning yeah, yes all out of the gate. Out of the gate, I'm going, yeah. I think you guys know too much about me already. <laughs> I, I don't, but I'll say this. I wanted, to, I, I wanted to have you on because, you know, a lot of times we talk about childhood and stuff like that, but as most of the folks out there know that are Tim Butterly fans, Tim's a proud father. He's got, yeah. his own, he's got his own little family. They started the family young. I remember when we were filming Babe Ruth Time Traveler eight years ago and you had the family were extras. Your wife was there. The little kids were there. 
I was like, I bet you the Butterly household is fun. I bet you there's a lot of 80s movies, a lot of snacks, a lot of Nerf guns, a lot of games. Do, do, you, do you associate like fun for children? Like fun parents, almost entirely garbage through and through, right? Oh, how, oh how there's a very okay. slim margin that aren't. Yeah, I got no shot. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, yeah. Wait. You're uh, like Robin Williams in the beginning of Mrs. Doubtfire. You got a fucking petting zoo for somebody's oh, party. Oh, man. Dude, you know who I've been trying to emulate? I've been trying to be uh, Gomez Adams. Like yeah. weird, weird guy. Everyone's kind of like doesn't, you know, normal people are like put off by him. But yeah, he's just trying to fucking read. He's just trying to love his kids and fucking fuck his wife. That's all Gomez is about. And if it weirds people out, that's fine. I like that. As long as you don't let the property go the way the fucking Adam <laughs> yeah. says. Well, you, yeah. slept a, you slept a coat of paint up there. I got a little, uh, a little bit of landscaping. Yeah, I live in a real up Philly dirt ball. I live in a, a real dirt ball neighborhood in Philly. So You're from you're from the city, right? You were, you, you were born and raised in the city? Yeah, Kensington, born and raised. Ooh. Yeah, this is what I know because my whole family's from Kensington as well. And we were the only one that we were the only ones that got a couple of bucks. My mom and dad got a couple of bucks and made it out the, the out to the out. suburbs. But I'm very well versed in uh, Kenzo to the Enzo. You know what I mean? How how would you sum it up for people that have just no familiarity with the region? Uh, I mean, it's shockingly awful. It's I mean, especially everything now. that you think about the worst part of the city. <laughs> it's it's Kensington. It, you'll still be. I remember taking a bus out there. Can't remember why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I remember I think looking it was to around. see your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like there would be like places where a bridge was supposed to be, but there'd be no bridge. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, like the uh, the land around it had like a bridge tan line. Oh, <laughs> just real gross. <laughs> a lot of former infrastructure. Yes. In a lot of rundown buildings. Lot of you know lots with high grass. Mm -hmm. A lot of oh, boarded up dude. windows. If you're if you're a Dominican dude, the ultimate come up is a house next to a house that burnt down, right? You mow out the grass, you throw down some pavers, you've got a private driveway for, you know, whatever whatever you're lugging stuff around bad. in. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's also Can you get away with that? Bro. I, they don't they don't send a lot of code inspectors down these parts. <laughs> L and I isn't swinging through to check to make sure there's girders or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of cease and desist orders now. There's no hard hats. There's no <laughs> lawless, yeah, dude. It is pretty. It's pretty wild. It used to be. It was like a very. I mean, it was always kind of dicey, but it was, it was like a very blue collar. I, I think historically it was like a. It was like a, a solid working class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an elevated train that runs through it. Uh, I don't know whoever thought those were a good idea because it's like, let's make a permanent night in a poor neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, cool. You've, you've basically made a crime garden that's you know 20 <laughs> miles long through the city. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, things went the way they went. And now it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's the heroin capital of the East Coast. Yes. I would, I would, I would argue maybe even the country. Like Number it's, one and something, baby. Come on. Yeah, right. Let's go. go. Phillies. Let's go. Put that on the fucking high school football banner. Let them run through it. <laughs> <laughs> um are you so you're still in kensington yeah i'm, I'm getting out any day now just trying Ooh. to find some property what you're still there dude Board up still the windows in. dude what? what are you doing but oh what was God. it like when you when you were growing up there though it was how many it kids was, did your parents have uh between them there were one two three four just five of us folks just for the listener out there never want to start a sentence between them <laughs> <laughs> when referring to siblings or parents, yeah, just if you're if you're playing along at home, <laughs> I was counting them on my fingers. I don't know if you could see that. Uh, yeah, and it was like it was shitty, but like it was shitty in a way where you could be as a child, you could be deluded into thinking it was normal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like and, there was still little league and riding your bike and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's like we had like the pal leagues and shit like that for free sports for the kids, and like you just didn't know that you were living in fucking abject pro poverty wait uh, the police athletic league yeah that was our sports Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's we, i don't think i even knew of a place with a travel team uh, until like i saw one on tv as like a teenager i was like wait what you well, south <laughs> korean baseball team? you don't just you don't just play every sport at the overused playground down the street <laughs> yeah dude those that's playgrounds weird. after dark get dicey too uh -uh. bro later well, that was actually how I ended up uh, developing a sense of humor was I was just constantly trying to make like the, I guess let's call them the older kids. I was constantly trying to make them laugh so that they would protect me from the other kids my age because I was a fucking dork. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So like if we had to like scrape by some of the older kids that were just looking to beat ass, I would try to crack a couple jokes, say something silly about myself. And eventually I was like, when someone came looking for me, they'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. he's, you know, that fat kid's kind of funny. Leave him alone. <laughs> it's, so weird. it's so weird. It's so weird that that's the only, that's like the universally respected thing with poor people is a sense of humor. If you can break balls, like do my yeah. whole family, it's like, we just get around, we just drink cheap beer and just make fun of each other. It's, it's insane. It's the only affection that I truly understand. Yes, yes. If you're not being made fun of at like a family, like if there's like if like my cousin brings a husband around and no one fucks with him, it's like because nobody likes him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, you should crave that. If you if you're around fucking poor people or dirt balls or whatever, and they're not ripping into you the second they meet you, it's because they're not feeling it, dude. One hundred percent. You got to fire a warning shot and see if they <laughs> yeah. return. You go across the bow of the boat to see what happens. Exactly, dude. Otherwise, it's, you know, sorry, dude. It's not working out, That can out, backfire, though. Your mom corners you. What did you say to Barry? Yeah, but parents have no, they have no, uh, what do you call it, jurisdiction over this kind of stuff. Like, they, they, they care a little bit about manners, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it's like, dude, just let us fucking ball out. Yeah, we just let, the, let the dudes, like, meet in the basement <laughs> and just, you know, fucking fight club this thing out. That, that just goes back to their brain from when you were kids and you were just doing wrestling moves on each other in an unsupervised bedroom. And every once in a while, they come up and be like, stop, stop guys, come on. Yeah. Be like, all right, cool. You were in the coat room at the party? <laughs> yeah. I was a big coat room kid, for oh, sure. Oh, it all went down in there, buddy. <laughs> Damn. It went down in the coat room. Just wearing swishy pants to a fancy party and sliding across the floor as fast as you could. Oh, Doing yeah. Doing a little rooting through some pockets, see what's up. So your house in Kensington was it like the standard three bedroom? This is the I, this is the house I grew up in. I, I oh, took shit. it over from my dad when he finally got out of the neighborhood. So many of my cousins did the same Bro. exact thing, dude. Dude, the fucking boxes getting checked here are oh. fucking. I I know, dude, and I d trust me, I'm aware of it. Uh, yeah, my my dad got out, and I was like, this would be a great opportunity. I could fix up my dad's old house. I could pay off the mortgage. Pretty I, good though. Smart. I found a charter school for my kids, so my kids aren't Ooh. in like a. You know what I mean? Well, they That's did start. Good. They started out in a kindergarten in a Philly public school in this neighborhood, and Ooh. luckily, like the kindergarten was separate from like the rest of the school. Otherwise, I might have fewer kids right now. And <laughs> I was I the weed the they were selling. Was <laughs> <good>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that the was the was fundraiser. <laughs> hey, buy a dime bag. Yeah. We're trying to play t ball over here. The weed was heroin. <laughs> <laughs> so. um I got them into a, like a, a charter school. Again, I'm just, I, dude, I'm trying to, in my mind, I'm justifying it. Like I'm saving money to provide a better life for my kids. I got them into charter school and I realized that where I was sending these kids every day at their old school, it, it was like an abandoned prison. The way that it was run, the way it was maintained. But uh, dude, they're good now. No big deal. We're almost out. Yeah, bounce back. No harm, no foul. Wow. But yeah, uh, so who, I grew up around here. I, I, I you know, I was supposed to Who grew up in the house people. with you? Uh, my only, my sister is a full sibling. The rest kind of came and went my younger sister. So we were, we were pretty tight. We're still like best friends. Do um, you still talk to the kind of outside siblings? One yeah. I talked to my, uh, my, my older, uh, half brother. He's like a full, he's basically a full. And then the other two now nah, we're, we're good. I'm good. Well, hold on. Let, let's back this up. Break down this dynamic for me. What are we Go talking ahead. about? Where do you want to start? Your mom and your dad both were married before correct yes and they both had kids before yeah yeah they both had prior kids how many how uh, many did your mom have my mom had two older than me and my dad had one older than me okay. so those are my three half brothers i don't talk to the ones they're all brothers mom. yeah yeah I but imagine just, those, being, those being some rough characters oh. yeah yeah dude uh there there was actually and when they would like have to kind of like co like step sing, sibling mingle it would get kind of dicey and i remember one night where one of my brothers from my mom had to be restrained by everyone in the house because he was trying to run out of the door with a kitchen knife to go after one of my brothers from my dad's friends so dude there's uh, it's funny I mean, it's a funny memory to me now sure. christmas time baby christmas time makes us all a little nuts yeah right <laughs> Dude, I was just with all my cousins this last weekend, and same thing. There, there was a fight that had to be, you know, had to, everybody had to push everybody away. It's just so, but like, it's so normalized in my family where I'm like, or like, what, or some, my, my wife's like, what are you guys going to do tomorrow? Like, I'm like, you'll just fucking say what's up and, you know, keep it moving. See you at Christmas, you know? Grab a breakfast, Sammy, and keep it rolling. What do you <laughs> yeah. guys have like a, like a high sign? Like, all right, we got to pull the cord. It's getting a little dicey. You know what I mean? It depends how much alcohol's involved, yeah. for sure. Like that, you know, they'll definitely blow by the checkpoints if uh, 
if they're feeling rowdy enough. So if it go, if it go goes ahead. and there's a fight, then the morning's going to be a little bit awkward. Sure. I, we've had we've had a couple of you know it's a big mistake for a garbage family doing the brunch after a wedding because a lot of fucking shit happens in the wee hours of the night at that wedding. And then you show up to the brunch and certain people aren't looking each other in the eye. This one left early. This one's not talking to that one. Dude, brunch after a wedding? What are you, a millionaire? (laughs) (laughs) I just paid for dinner. What do you mean? The wedding ends. You have to vacate the VFW. Oh, that was one of my questions. Have you ever been to a wedding at a VFW? I've been or Knights of Columbus. No, Knights of Columbus is also that's a little bit less urban than me. Uh, <laughs> VFWs. It was everything was at the VFW, and we only stopped going to this VFW when uh, there was a shooting in front of it. Then we were like, all right, we're gonna stop booking at the uh, VFW. I'll tell you what, though, they know their way around a fucking meatball and a mashed Bro. potato. There's, I haven't, I haven't been served food at an event in my adult life that has ever compared to a roast beef sandwich from a VFW. Uh, <laughs> dude, coming out what? of those, dude, coming out of those sternos, uh, forget dude, just, about it. Just fucking mm. wet meat that you're oh. scooping out with a spoon. You like gotta like dry oh. it, you know what I mean, before you put it on the roll. Dude, I'm Love salivating. That sterno I'm, flavor. My God, a stale Kaiser roll. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. A bad salad with warm ranch dressing. Dude, yeah. dude. Ah, oh, yeah, soggy lettuce. No croutons. <laughs> All right. So growing up. As far as you could tell, it was your mom, your mom and your dad. They stayed together the whole time you, you were growing up, right? Uh, until about high school. Yeah. Oh, then they split up. Yeah. Because I've yeah. met your dad before. He's a he, he's, he's he's an ass kicker. Dude, he's the best guy in the world. Yeah. And uh, he's the he's the only reason that I'm not, you know, and he's one of these huge fucking... and scary. Well, yeah, not but scary. But he looks I, I get how his size could be scary. Yeah. Sweetest fella. Heart of gold. I just uh, when I met him, though, he was wearing a wife beater. Is that possible? A black wife beater? Wow. I didn't say he was classy. Yeah, he's not. He's not a fucking Rockefeller. You know yeah, what I mean? He, he's the kind. guy's from Kensington. Come he's, on, yeah, he's, he's got he's a kind. pair of Reebok classics on. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, <laughs> I remember him sneakers. coming across as like a like a motorcycle guy. Yeah, he's he's a well. So if if you oh, fuck, how do I phrase this? You, he's kind of like a, a a poverty gearhead where it's like, well, the truck broke again. I have to fix it. Like that mm. kind of guy. You know what I mean? The dirty hands his whole life. And what did he do for a living? He was a he owned a, a series of print shops that That's all right. failed for different like you know <laughs> you could blame other people reasons, but he never was that kind of guy, and he always just you know eyes forward kept working. Hmm. So as long as I've known him, rough hands, always dirty, always smells like some kind of chemical, never stops well, working. That's very respectable. Respectable. Yeah. And your mom, what was her, what was her story? She was a lunatic. I there I haven't go. yeah I nice. haven't talked to her. <laughs> Turn over a couple of rocks, you find the yeah. snake. Here we go, <laughs> Kim. <laughs> I haven't been super public about this. I I'm I'm like I'm constantly like online and talking and putting mm-hmm. shit out, and it's all personal. But I haven't really spilled any anything on her. I haven't talked to her in about ten years. Wow. And she uh she tried to do she tried to pull off the ultimate in white trash. She tried to get a disability claim for life that wasn't quite. You know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't a slip and fall, but it wasn't, you know, anyway, it didn't go her way. And along the way, she got kind of, you know, she started to like the uh, candy they were giving her. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was just like just a series of bad decisions and like, you know. So she shook, actually got shook, injured from it. Deal with. It was like a minor like uh, back thing at work. And then she was like, dude, I'm getting paid forever. And we were all kind of like, oh, like we didn't have like the cushion to go through that kind of process. No, but I'm saying she didn't go into it like as a scam. Like, all right, Tim, you're going to drive me to work and then you're going to spill some ice on the floor when we get to the top of the steps and then I'll spill a coffee and you'll push me down. Yeah. So then- like a step, like, yeah, like a hair back from that. It was like, yeah, my back hurts from that thing at work. And then it was like just dollar signs in the eyes. Mm. Wow. And uh, that dude that Yeah. It destroyed us. It killed us. Well, I mean, obviously not, dude. We're pushing on. We're, we're, you know. Yeah, you got a sweet setup there. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. As a homeowner, got a sweet setup. Kids Bro. are in charter schools. God damn, Butterly. Yeah, well, because I, dude, I so Forget I. about I, your mom's fraud. You got a set of headphones. Come on. You, <laughs> <laughs> you got because the charter dad, school. Dude, I'm, I'm more garbage adjacent. Like, I know what I'm supposed to be. I know how it's supposed to turn out. But uh, like, yeah. like I said, I had a very. Uh, kind dad who kind of kept me on the right track and uh and i was also a fucking dork like if i didn't have super nintendo i'd probably be dead from heroin but yeah i'm not gonna fucking look at you know i'm not gonna question it too much <laughs> sure, sure keep your head down and keep working like your dad you know i'm yeah i'm self-aware i'm the johnny five of garbage 
You know what I mean? <laughs> do, do not disassemble. I'm, I'm an autistic robot that should have been fucking a junkie. That's fine. And how much younger is your sister than you? Like three years. So you yeah. guys grew up in there together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fighting, fighting constantly. Uh, is it normal for uh, uh, brothers and sisters to fist fight constantly growing up? Or is that just garbage? I couldn't speak on it, but yeah, it's pretty garbage. You, yes. It usually raises a, raises a tough girl and a and a not a tough son. That, that that's your that's your sparring partner. I would say that's exactly how we ended up. Yeah, was she taking <laughs> you, dude? Well, so a, a sister in a sibling fight has a handicap because if you go, if if the brother goes a hundred percent, yeah, you're fucked, dude. Mm-hmm. You're you're punished, man. Oh, the, give me the fucking Super Nintendo controllers. But you're getting your you're getting your ass beat by your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the sister goes 100%, you, the brother still gets in trouble. You know what I mean? So right. she was like weapons free, and I'm like, what are the, what's the limitations on this? What's the rules of engagement on yeah, this? Yeah, what's the rules? <laughs> so she, she fucked me up, dude. My, my younger sister used to beat the shit out of me. Did your dad, hit, did your mom or dad smack you around? Yeah, my, my mom would pop us every once in a while. My dad, I don't think, ever once hit me. Never needed to, dude. He was he was all. That sounds like a real straight fucking shooter, straight Bro, guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, it has to be bad luck that he's not a fucking, you know, capitalist winner in life, mm-hmm. or maybe yeah. just like he, he doesn't like any of the negative association with uh, you know taking what you want from the world, and mm-hmm. you know, he's a, he's like a monk. That's what he is. He's a fucking monk. Kensington monk. Kensington monk. Exactly. <laughs> You make it sound like Shaft walking around the neighborhood yeah. solving crimes. Yeah, well, you know, he's incorruptible. I do, yo, I, I use the neighborhood to keep my kids in line, though. Like, so That's yeah, good. I'm kind of a fun dad, right? Dude, I'm, just, I'm a, we, we kid around around here, huh? But when <laughs> we're having a good time, come on. My daughter's 12, dude. And when she comes to me with like what 12 year olds like on the internet, she'll, she'll tell me about like YouTuber interpersonal drama. And I'm like, Okay, let's go for a little ride. Mm-hmm. And we'll take a drive. Like, if I take like a, a half a mile radius around my house, it's like you're looking at human zombies, like decaying on the street. Yeah. I'm like, what do you think the YouTubers, what do you think they would think about this kind of stuff, huh? You want to see a little bit of reality? Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I saw a lady. She was mid conversation and like casually like flipping her hair. This is, this is, so here, let me set the scene for you. There's an elevated train that I mentioned earlier. And right now, because they cleaned out like a homeless encampment around a a train station somewhere, they closed down like a bunch of tent cities in Philly. They're all congregating just in a corridor under this elevated train. And it's the bleakest shit you've ever seen. Like imagine if like, uh, like rubble in Afghanistan also had junkies on it. So that's what we're doing. So we're just driving through. And I'm watching this lady just tell a story and like flipping her hair, talking to a friend. And if you looked at her shins, her shins both had like gangrenous holes in them. Her, uh, leg, her, her legs were rotting off of her body. And she's just like, yeah. And I told him like, I don't even care about that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> see, like, when, her shins look like you ever, you ever, uh, you ever see like a boss fight in a video game where like it, the boss lets you know where they're vulnerable. Like a sure, big red yeah, yeah, yeah. She, Both of her legs were her weak spot and they were like flashing red. And I was just like, hey, cool. Let's uh, tell me more about, you know, how these YouTubers want to know who's the best at makeup or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. Jesus Christ, dude. But it might be a little bit harsh now that I'm saying it out loud. No, it's like scared straight, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, it I, sounds like you're doing good down there and the neighborhood's uh, <laughs> doing fantastic. Buy low, sell high, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bro, I don't let any of this shit hold me back. I don't care. I, I, I'm, I'm fully aware. For sure. I think you, you know, obviously you came, I think, from... Not your dad seems like a straight shooter, but like you were came from a garbage environment for sure. You know, definitely not the best environment. And you're like you're like the phoenix that rose up. From he's the still in it. What are you yeah. talking about? He's yeah. I, I know, but he's he's got a good life for himself. He's married, got some kids. He's not pulling a slip and fall scam. You know what I mean? He's, his kid's got a good head on his shoulder. I'm I'm optimistic. I <laughs> might pull out of this. I might pull out of this, <laughs> dude. I'm I'm putting my money on Butterly. Yeah. Thank you. It, it means a lot just to have someone say that. You know what I mean? Dude, what are you talking? Dude, the kid's a fucking fighter. Come on. That's true. I keep these, uh, my kids are sweet too, by the way. I know. Yeah. I see. I see pics on the gram and everything. 
this is the, like we can't let them out of the house anymore like the neighborhood's <laughs> declined so much that we just have yeah. to keep them inside so now i'm wondering like am i is there gonna be a netflix series about me someday because of how i have to raise them they're like a shed family like when, yeah like, <laughs> like hannah or whatever yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i chain them to radiators at night this is for their safety all right <laughs> he taught them to kill at an early age they got i got them all in jujitsu learning how to fight they'll be fine don't worry do you me. really yeah not bad jujitsu that's pretty good you, karate. What, you butchered whatever you tried to say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do jitsu jujitsu yeah there you go all right let's get into some fucking are you garbage questions let's here with mr tim butterly um like i said i'm fascinated by the butterly family now i just want that on record that i want to hear a little bit about that too so maybe we can go back and forth a little bit all right happy to hit him with some of the basics kip what do you think Sure, let's do it. All uh, right, so you go, go ahead. No, go, go, go. You lived in the same house growing up. Correct. You're in that house now. You made a lot of improvements to it. Some improvements. You made some improvements. Oh, very interesting. What's the What was the bathroom like growing up? Did you have a curtain? Did you have a glass? Did you have oh curtain? Yeah, the, the bathtub or just a shower. There was a bathtub, but I don't remember ever being able to fit in it. But that might have been a fat thing. Jesus Christ, how fat were you? Your little kid? <laughs> Bro, I was probably your size now when I was a kid. <laughs> That's a big what? boy. I was a fat boy, dude. I used to, my, my older brothers, my older half brothers, they used to uh, make, to make their friends laugh, they would make me make a frog face with my fat tits and belly. Oh, like if I pulled my I tits know the down. Face. And yeah, but it kills, it up, kills. Geez. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> yeah, it fucking kills yourself, dude. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like how we have both of you. One went the other way, one went the other. Foley's like, that's a good bit. But it's yeah. like, no, it made me change my life for the better. Yeah. Foley's like, dude, I, that's my clothes on the road. I don't tell nobody, but. Well, do you know how many truffle shuffles I had to do when I was fucking uh. 10 years old? <laughs> tell you, dude, it's bu- it, it makes you bullyproof because someone bigger is going to want to keep laughing at that. You know what I mean? It's true. Well, how did you get so big? What was your was it emotional eating? No, I, I, yeah, my parents didn't know anything about nutrition. So it was just like, they trust you to feed yourself. And I was like, all right, well, I will trust myself to eat fucking pop tarts six hours a day. That was your move. That's what you, that's, yeah, that was yeah. your poison. Sweet that was breakfast. Your, that was your heroin. For sure. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, sweet breakfast. And my, my, oh, my dad's also an incredible cook. So we what? had like crazy good home cooked meals every single night. What's a sweet breakfast? Just like only pastries, yeah, like only donuts Pop-Tarts. or something. Not like you know, he's not doing not like, eggs. Not proteins and healthy fats. I've never heard that. That's trash. I like a sweet breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's either a sweet or a savory. Sure, I see what you're saying. Fully, fully That's heard the word sweet, and his shit. fucking eyes started rolling back in his head. Yeah, That's right. Some fat kid shit. <laughs> oh my god! Fully doesn't get it because he didn't know there was an alternative. <laughs> yeah, he said, "Wait, wait a minute! Isn't that kind of redundant?" It's just breakfast. <laughs> Did you just say breakfast? Breakfast? <laughs> um, literally, the first question on my list is: Have you ever gone to a wedding at a VFW or Knights of Columbus? Um, but have you ever been to the Pennsylvania State Fair? No, no, dude, that's above me. I would say that's above wow. my station. Or maybe, maybe I did. You know what? We did do a lot. It used of- to be at the racetrack in Ben Salem. Yeah, dude, we didn't get we didn't get that far north of the city very often. Uh, we did a lot of uh, Clementon Park when I was a kid. Oh, and they had a- oh my god! My For god. the listener, this is fucking <laughs> trash. Clementon, Clementon Park. Park. I haven't been back since I was a kid. Is that really? Is it? Is it that? Well, I know it's bad now, but was it bad <laughs> when we were kids? They test IEDs out there now. That's, <laughs> that, that's what they do. That's how shitty this place was. I I remember in kindergarten we went there and I had a we had like a yarn name tag where you wrote your own name. It would be useless to identify me, by the way, if I was separated <laughs> from a. Yeah. <laughs> and then we uh, the river. They had a petting zoo, so I was like, "Oh, there's animals that aren't pigeons here. This is fancy." You know what I mean? And uh, what was and just it? pigeons painted a different color. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just says goat with a sign pointing at a pigeon. Just hooves taped onto <laughs> pigeons. Livestock. Uh, I think a, a baby goat ate my name tag off of me. Like, first of all, that was the safety. Of the, well, it was a petting zoo. It reached through and it ate my name tag off. And yeah. uh, I always thought of it as like a charming memory. And there's just 
it I is. Found it, yeah. It is at that age. It is. But like looking back, like, dude, I love the love the good petting zoo with growing up. And I was actually at the Pennsylvania State Fair. They had one. And me and my buddy gave the pot belly pig bubble gum. Damn. And he just sat there and chewed it for an hour <laughs> and a half straight, dude. Just, and we fuck. It was the funniest day of my life. Did you guys take turns pretending it was talking as we were doing? Yeah, what do you want to go? I'll get nuts? What are you doing? <laughs> How did I not know that? That's the truth. Oh, really? Dude, shout out to me and my, me and my boy Pat. Uh, and, like, the, what the kind of button. hillbilly shit? Who the fuck would even think of that? Hey, man, let's give the pig some gum. <laughs> fuck. I don't know. Well, they well, you used to put the quarters in, and they had like the feed that would come out of the like the gumball slots. You know, it was like a gumball machine with <laughs> half of pig seed. <laughs> yeah, with like goat feed or whatever. It was just like brown food that they like, they would eat. Mm-hmm. And we ran out of quarters or whatever. We had a couple, you know, some bubble tape on us or something. <laughs> they fucking got Fuck. busy. Line them up with a hubba bubble. Let's do this. That fucking rules. Wow, that's fucking. Climbing Tim Park is tough though. That's that's a tough look. Yeah, like we 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 weren't brazen enough to play pranks on animals at Clemson <laughs> Park, but but we enjoyed it all the same. They had a oh, they had the world's oldest wooden roller coaster or something like that, and I don't know if it's still operational. I think I was near the end of them decommissioning a ride. Yeah, that's. I remember I remember going to places with wooden roller coasters, and I was like, "What?" My dad like, "Get on, it's safe." I'm like, "Dude, get the fuck out of here with that trash." <laughs> I, I think we saved up to go to Six, Six Flags one summer, and when I went on like a real saved roller up, coaster, what? yeah, these, like, yeah, we saved six up. pack of Coke, what yeah, the fuck? a couple of cans of Coke, like, got the coupons <laughs> saved up. Most people have a college fund. You have a great adventure fund. <laughs> Dude, I only found out like five years ago that there are beaches that you have to pay to be on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fuck that beach tag shit. I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, that shit's cool. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't pay to be on them, but like, I, yeah, I, I didn't know there was anything other than North Wildwood. Mm-hmm. That's where I spent my whole fucking, that's where I quarantined for the last three months was North Wildwood. Whoa. It is a different world down there, baby. Wait, so in the preseason, it wasn't even open yet. No, it's not open. Well, it's kind of open. The board, some of the things on the boardwalk are open. But yeah, I went down there in the beginning of March, and I just came back like last week. I was down this weekend. The the shirt airbrushers are showing up for preseason practice. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like they still got like the like the basketball game with like the beat it with the dented in rims where the basketball barely fits. I'm like, nothing's changed in this place in fucking 25 years. It's frozen in time. It's incredible. They just 100%. keep it. I think they had like a, a laser tag place in the nineties on there and they just update it with like the new, like now it's like a VR and rolled ice cream place, but that's <laughs> the one thing that changes. Yeah. Dippin' dots in VR. Yeah, exactly. I saw off brand Dippin' dots the other day at Walmart. Did you try them out? No, I didn't try them out. I never had Dippin' dots. Whoa, that was some, really? No, we were never allowed to get them. It was too expensive. Same. Like they were hot. They space. were dude, the nineties. The they were fucking hot. You had what to buy mean? them out of a kiosk at the mall. Yeah, uh-uh. and my mom took one look at that. Thought it was a scam. She was like, "No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> we've never, we've never had kiosk money, dude." Ah, uh, no. The only place we went that was kiosk was there used to be this place in the malls called maybe it's local, but it was called Joanne's Nut House, and it was like just a candy kiosk where you'd buy like candy by the pound, like you know like chocolate covered peanuts and all that kind of stuff. And my aunt knew somebody that worked there. So we'd literally go in like one day a year with the whole family, extended family too. We'd That's all go trash. to the, we, yeah, we'd all go to the mall together. We'd caravan up to King of Prussia Mall, hit the fucking food court, do some shopping, a lot of window, and then when we got done, we'd, <laughs> we'd hit Joe in. You're kicking tires at Foot Locker. <laughs> I I, can I see just want to I just want yeah I just want to I can see myself in this pair of fucking Air Maxes. Let me it's a potential customer. Dude, can I? Uh... As at eleven years old, I would have been blown away by getting fourteen dollars in free candy once a year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's such that shows how trashy your family is though. You get a you get a fucking you know a chocolate covered pretzel connect, and the whole family rolls up to fucking <laughs> take advantage of it. <laughs> Dude, we would man. It was like the Lufthansa heist. We'd walk, <laughs> we'd walk in with a fucking suitcase and just walk out like we own the joint. Bully, <laughs> bully. <laughs> Dude, that's trash. That is Some say two pounds trash. of caramel. Some say three pounds of caramel. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are putting Ziploc bags in your pocket so you can fill them up. <laughs> Foley's 26. <laughs> <laughs> Candy heist of the century. Oh, my God, dude. That is garbage.
What was the name of your grocery store growing up? Shopping bag. Oh Ooh, my god. Shopping bags are tough. Is that re- that's regional, right? That's regional, I think. That's garbageable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shopping bags are tough. Shoprite is okay, but the one even I've been to the Shoprite a lot in your neighborhood. That's a t- that Shoprite is fucking something else. But yeah, that that Shoprite's like it's it's lowbrow for sure, but it's got like the comfort of like you ever go to someone's mom mom's house and it smells like soup. Mm-hmm. That's what Shoprite is. It doesn't yeah. feel dangerous. It feels like you know. All right, better I'm you know I better be on my fucking best behavior here. Yeah, shopping bag. Yeah, that's it's like Beirut. Hold on, man. Yeah. Shoot. Did you did you hear the way my mom rolled off his tongue? <laughs> Is that what you called your grandma, my mom? Uh, no, my 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 mom was Graham. I had Graham butt. Rest in peace, dude. Who was your shout mom? Out, shout out to Graham. No, I I never said my mom, dude. That's that's for that's to make everybody else more comfortable. We said grandma. <laughs> when I was a small kid, we said grandma. Okay, because that was like the fanciest thing about me, I guess. When I heard other kids saying like my mom and pop pop, I was like. Or like right. Mammy and Pappy, that shit's weird. <laughs> dude, yeah, it's real you call creepy. your grandmother a pet name? What are you, a fucking <laughs> loser? Yeah, dude. No, I, I completely agree with you. Right? Saying grandmother made me feel normal. Dude, so why my, did my... you say mama when you did the, when you explained it? Because I'm not trying. I'm not putting on airs anymore, dude. I'm <laughs> it is what it is. I, I don't need to church up my fucking po- my destitute grandmothers <laughs> anymore, dude. They were my mom. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Holy I can't stand shit. people say shit like me, Maul. Get the fuck out of here. We got a yeah. couple of those floating have, around. Yeah. Have you ever uh have you ever worked at a supermarket? Yeah, first job, Acme. Ah, mine too. All right. Yeah, Look I was at that. I started Shop. out as a bagger. Mm-hmm. And uh ended I, as a bagger. No, I ended <laughs> I, 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 dude, You want a, you want a fucking garbage job? Overnight shelf stalker. Oh my god. God, dude. At a so, Northeast Philly Acme. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. It's so true. It's so true. I used to, all right, so I'll put a pin in that. My family uh, owns a construction company that works, that fixes that shop right in on Aramingo or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we would have to go in overnight because people from the neighborhood would come in and rip out the sinks and the toilets for the copper. So like, that's, that's the level of poverty and scumbag. Um, but we would have to go in overnight and you would see those dudes stocking the shelves and they are, dude, those guys are cut from another fucking cloth. A lot of meth, a lot of Mountain Dew. I, I remember how- A lot how, of weird eye contact. <laughs> they, they were very, uh, they were very, they, they had specific opinions about the box cutters that they used and they always wanted to talk about it. That was the main thing I picked up from those guys. Jesus. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of not being at work because you were arrested. <laughs> uh Oh, my, my big thing, though, was that uh, <laughs> at my Acme, they didn't clean the bakery at night. So there was always, like, cookies and shit left in it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, the, the cookies that were supposed to get thrown out. So I would constantly just do a lap. I'd, like, put some fucking chips on the shelf, do a lap, grab a cookie. So it was just, like, eight hours overnight of just eating flour and sugar. And then I would get home at, like, eight in the morning and fucking crash on it. That's, did you have another job or that was your only job? That was yeah. That was my only job until uh, I got uh, I got into IT. That's to choose the to work the graveyard shift is a fucking we. If you have to do it because you have like kids and you're like, oh, I work money. days and then nights. Sure, I'll get you that. But if you're just like, well, I'm kind of a night guy. You're a fucking creep. Yeah, <laughs> wow, the, you're a graveyard shift guy. <laughs> by choice, by choice, he is. Yeah. He I'm was reformed. bagging. He could have stayed bagger. I'm a reformed graveyard shift guy. Well, I do, so here's how I thought about it, right? It was my first job, like, the, the summer after high school, and it was very clear I was never going to college. So I, I was I, I, a part-time fucking grocery bagger, and I'm, there's no next step. So all I was doing was I was imagining myself at 65 years old, like, well, did I save enough money from bagging groceries at home? Also, no one teaches you about ambition and, like, goals and that kind of shit. Like, it was just, <laughs> okay, you didn't die, and you didn't get addicted to anything. There, you have a clear winner, criminal yeah. record. Yeah, like to, to, I was the fucking white sheep. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I, I probably should have just become a fucking cop or something. But <laughs> but I was a fucking dork. I, I knew enough about fixing fucking computers that now, now without ever going to college, I'm like, I have a pretty fucking sweet IT job. Yeah, man. So it's again, nice. dude, garbage adjacent, man. The Phoenix that rose from the ashes. Exactly. 
<laughs> Kippy's on your side, buddy. I like this. Well, I mean, I know, I literally, I know what you came from, and I know that it's like, you know, the fact that you're even where you are isn't a fucking Dude, accomplishment. This is this is what fucking dad meat is literally about. Every single episode is just about waking up every day saying, "I am a fat fucking gay retard," but <laughs> let's see what we could do with it. You know what sure, I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's moving and shaking. I like it. All right, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba. Anyone in your family ever collect state quarters? I just uh, used a bunch of them as money. Kippy, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that was a fucking snipe. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> nah, what do you mean? He's a good kid. He rose up from the ashes. I know what it's like to be in that neighborhood. Look at him. IT job, nice family. He's doing <laughs> Meanwhile, Hi, do you guys take do you guys take two dollar bills? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've asked that in the not so not so distant past. I've asked that question. Well, you take a two from me. <laughs> do, you, do you remember when uh, Sacagawea dollars came out? Oh Did, yeah, do I? We wrote the date down at my house. Uh, yeah, I I found uh, a folding like display booklet for the state quarters i had that exact one turn it upside down shook it out and uh yeah i found 10 of the sack of joya dollars and even even now as a 34 year old man a part of my brain was like these are the first 10 dollars that i'm going to use to get out of this shithole you know what i mean like mm -hmm. that's it's still that's a part of my brain any money that i find that isn't taxed. I'm like, I'm going to start a new life, basically. <laughs> it's a savings bond. He's waiting. Yeah. He's wait yeah. <laughs> going to let this baby mature, and I'm good. Dude. Oh, man. Wow, that was such, that's such a garbage thing. It's, it's great in you to be like, these quarters are going to be worth. That's having no idea of how money works, economies, currency, nothing. You're just going. Beanie babies. Oh, that's, yeah. Beanie, but collecting the shit from McDonald's, too. I'm like, these are going to be worth something one day. Yeah, dude. Uh, oh, my God. That was hard to get out of my brain. Like, especially, like, when you hear that shit as a kid and then you want to, like, collect Pokemon cards. We, I, I, my parents never bought me one Pokemon card. I, I don't think that they ever were going to gain value. I was never like, dude, I'm going to day trade these when I'm older. But <laughs> that's... Day trading Pokemon cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah what's that called? Arbitrage? Where you're just, like, looking yeah, at Yeah, you, know yeah, you I mean? buy some. Yeah, exactly. Here at Stratton Butterly, we like to... Dude, Oh God, there was, this is the worst possible version of this. Uh, when I was a kid, the, one of the cool things that we did was we explored abandoned factories and warehouses and shit. Like you would break a window. Stuff. That's you great You don't say. Stuff. Like a dry rotted door, you would just like mule kick it until it was big <laughs> enough to get through. And me and, uh, me and this fucking kid who is now dead from heroin, we found a bunch of uh, the the ratcheting clamps that tie shit down onto yeah. the back of a flatbed truck. Yeah. And he convinced me, he's like, dude, we got to flip these. You know how much of the, one of the things, one of these things is like 50 bucks. And we found like a bunch of them in an abandoned warehouse. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, making, I, Oh God, this is so fucking stupid. I was, <laughs> I was like making plans with this dude. I was like, dude, all right, first of all, we're going to need a way to get them all out of here at once. Okay. Uh, once we transport them, we need a, pl a safe place to keep them. So we were like looking at like areas near railroad tracks that we could leave these without someone like stealing them or fucking pissing on them. Uh, and then I, I fucking told my dad about it. I was like, hey, dad, uh, I want to so cut you, know. you in. I want to cut you in before this thing takes off. Oh, I'll let you wet your beak a little bit. You know what I mean? Hey, hey dad, you got 12 grand in 15 minutes. I got an idea. Oh, I got an investment opportunity. You got keys to a pickup truck? Dude, I was, like, <laughs> I was like 12 years old, and I was like, Dad, just so you know, man, we might have a little bit of money coming our way. Do you fuck, do I, I need you to understand that this is not the joke version of this story, dude. This fucking sucks. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, I just yeah. I, I, I picture Butterly's dad coming in from a long day at work, hands all greasy, just, just fixed the fucking family car. He's sitting there with like a cigar and a cognac. Like, Dad, things are different now. Like, I don't know if you heard. I found some ratchet clamps down at the factory. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going. Have you what seen you ratchet doing? clamp futures recently? We're going to be rich. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, that is so, garbage yeah. DNA right there. My, my dad extracted me from the plan, and he did it without hurting <laughs> my feelings, dude. He and talked then, out of you, walked away. Yeah. 
And then he uh-huh. was like, on top of that, actually, this was a solid move. He was like, please stop going into abandoned. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but dude, the same, that same abandoned uh, building found the fucking clamp come up. Also found a bunch of discarded uh, porno VHS covers, bro. Ooh, that's big. Just the covers? Yeah, just the covers, which was good enough because that it eliminated the risk of finding a VCR and using it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever tried to secretly use a VCR in a row home. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Especially never... when you're rewinding and fast forward yeah. and like a fucking, like an editor. Yeah, and your parents are like sitting at the dining room table looking upstairs like, that, that thing's been going for like 45 minutes. It's, <laughs> you're trying to find the one thing that you want over and over again? Sure. This is oh, a big, man. did you ever have just the, uh, just the VHS rewinder? And absolutely not, dude. Yeah, you're talking man. about privilege there bro Dude, my buddy had one and i walked up my fucking head exploded when he busted that thing out to return a movie i was like what the fuck that is that is actually pretty that's high level garbage when you're when you own a device that just makes returning rented vhs sure <laughs> because you think it's good that's the garbage thing is like oh this i need this it's yeah like you rick, put it by the front door a, yeah it's like what ricky bobby would buy you know what i mean it's like that <laughs> that kind of trash <laughs> If you had real money, you'd be paying someone to rewind your movies. For exactly. You. You, you just pay the fee. Drop it off. Dude, fucking whatever, dude. I got it. I got 99 cents. Mm-hmm. Wasting my time rewinding a fucking movie. Fuck. All right. What do you got, Fatso? Tim, have you ever owned a P.O. box? No. No, that's, that's uh, again, dude, any added expense out, outside of the realm of possibility for me. Mm-hmm. Actually, dude, like, uh. And I, although now I do realize that P.O. boxes are for trash. I just, I just what was this a couple of weeks ago? during the Nothing good was ever sent or received from a P.O. box. Well, I, you, I always saw them on like um, like when you would order shit on TV. I'd, I'd see P.O. boxes there. So I was like, oh, that's a business thing. You don't need a fucking P.O. box. Otherwise. <laughs> need but that I, for, the, for, the, for the buckle business. I do. <laughs> So I, I, I actually had to go, I had to retrieve mail from the post office a couple of weeks ago and I took my 12 year old with me and we, there was a long line obviously and we're social distancing. So it's moving slow. You're, you're standing in there for a long time. Mm-hmm. And on top of seeing two fucking sleepy heads falling asleep, standing up, just the, in, the people cycling in and out, checking their PO box and like slamming it shut. Cause there was nothing in it. Like, no check. They're waiting on something. Yeah. You could, yeah. You could feel the intention. Of whatever they're expecting. Oh, Again, though, man. dude, I just I, I simboed my daughter to this. I'm like, look at this, dude. This could all be yours if you just make terrible decisions for the yep. rest of your life. Keep it up. You'll have a fucking P.O. box. Yeah, you get a P.O. box, a fucking one sandal. It'll be fucking tight. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, let's see. <clears throat> have you uh, – this might be good. Have you ever gone to a scrapyard to find a part for your car? Oh, man, <laughs> I need to right now, and I'm planning oh. on doing it, but I'm afraid to do it. What do you need? I got to get a new bumper for uh, my wife's car. That's an easy pickup out of scrap. What kind scrap of car you think? I don't know that. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's actually not a bad car. It's a Volvo from 2011, so it's pretty fancy for me. Yeah, you pretty call up to have it ready. I'll have it waiting for you. Bro, they, they can sense that I'm not fully one of them. I do. That's always such a fear of mine when I walk in. I'm like, they know I'm not one of these guys. <laughs> they Just know a bumper? It, you don't need a whole new engine? Yeah, exactly. So it, a lot of my dealings with like shit that should come second nature, like I should very easily, and I know how to fix a, a thing or two, right? I can't go to a fucking a pickup part place because i'm just like i'm gonna get there they're gonna be like look at this fucking pussy it's gonna be a thing and i just don't mm-hmm. want the ten- i don't want the the tension but it, it, sure sure dude that it, that, that, that happened to me when during quarantine i went out a while so i'm like ah i'm killing time down here i'm like i'll go fish there was a fishing rod in the garage so i went out fishing so then i'm like i gotta find bait and i was like yeah i need bait and they're like well what are you going for i'm like oh here we go this yeah. is a fucking thing and then I get it, and then I'm out there fishing. Some guy goes, comes up and goes, ah, they biting? I'm like, here we go. Now I got to talk to you. Like a bad um, FBI agent. Yeah, you just – I don't have the answers you're looking for. He's like, what are you, tog fishing? I'm like, dude, I'm just getting out of the house. Just, I'll, I'll, You know what? <laughs> I'm going to leave. You stay here. I threw it out twice. I casted it twice, brought it back in, and the conversation – I was like, I got to go. 
Oh man, I so part of me wonders like, do those people just want to talk? You know what I mean? And that's just their for way. Sure, for sure. And like, I get it, man. Imagine that, that's like that's like me going to like a be- a baseball game and like talking about baseball to the guy next to me. Like, ah, just see that play. Like he's talking to me about fishing while we're standing on the rocks fishing. It's not out of this world, you know. But like, that's like a poor people defense mechanism. Like everyone's got. You know, everyone's got like a grift to them. Everyone, there's a second. What, sure. What are you missing while he's just talking to you for in a friendly way? Yes. Yeah. So you grow. That's ingrained in you as you <laughs> as you grow up, and then everyone, everyone, it's like, what's your what's your ulterior motive here, dude? How are you gonna fuck me on this? Sure. And it it sucks because you know that's probably a guy who raises people that way, and now when he just tries to be friendly with a guy at the pier. He's like, another guy just fucking pulled his line in and left. I was just trying to say, I was just trying trying to say, yo, cuz, what's up? (laughs) Yeah, man, that's so true. My mom is so weary of everything. I always thought it was like, you know, like, it's like very cat, like Irish Catholic, like fear driven too. like everything. Like, don't look at that. That's how they get you, dude. Everything's, that's Mm -hmm. how they get you. It's so fear driven. Foley, Foley, you are, Foley's turning into his mom. Every time I talk to him, he's like, well, what about this? And what about the killer wasp? And what about that? It's, I don't. I'm friendly, right? And, like, I love all people, but I can't stand, like, especially when I'm doing something trashy, like when, like, somebody tries to strike up a conversation with you at McDonald's, like, you believe they're taking this long? Or I was going to Home Depot and Walmart the other day, and, like, as we're walking in, there's, like, you know, people behind me, like, I we got to wear these masks, and they don't know what they're doing. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, the, like everyone's everyone's got secret knowledge, you know what I mean? That's that's real garbage behavior. It's like, yeah, yeah I can't I can't just do what the sign says, dude. Come on, think yeah. about it. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> that is garbage. All right, I want to know. Take me into the Butterly House now. Okay. All right. You're here. I'm Let's here. Go. Close your eyes. I know the kids are are getting a little bit older. What's the snack situation at the Butterly House? Uh, still First of all, tarts. still pop tarts. <laughs> yeah, still pop tarts. It's <laughs> pretty good. Wow. Go ahead. That's Sorry, you were going to say something else though. Well, I was going to ask you about the. I, I was going to get into dinner. First, I was going to ask, like, do you guys have dinner every night together? Absolutely. We sit down at the dinner table every single night together. Wow. Home cooked meal. Plus. Almost always a home cooked meal. Uh, my wife's a stay at home mom, dude. Dude, this kid's all fucking class. Stay at home, mom, and didn't even have to do well, a slip and fall. That ain't bad. <laughs> that, that was the trade off. She'd be well, running for mayor. <laughs> yeah. Would be a district councilman in Kensington, too? <laughs> uh, Stay yeah, at he, home, mom. Dinner's on the table every night. Yeah, we decided early on we, we would be very happy to just be poor, uh, but focus on our kids because we, we started having kids when we were like 22. Didn't, wow. didn't know that we shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Um, accidental, accidental kids, and I was—I think I was just emulating my dad every step of the way, just doing the worst possible option for everything, but also being guided by like this internal poor person righteousness. Like, oh, obviously I'm going to do the right thing here and raise children in poverty. <laughs> you are, dude. How old are your children now? The ones, the, the your little girl and your little boy that that I met back in the day. They're twelve and nine. 12 and 9. And you have a little one, too, we have a, right? We have a three-year-old that you didn't meet. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Settle something for us. You sit down every night. You're having dinner. Okay. What are the kids drinking? Are they having iced tea? Are they having soda? What do you give your kids to drink while they're having dinner at night? Uh, sometimes our uh, my son, Ben, he's nine. Sometimes he'll have a soda. We'll, we'll okay. limit him, though. We limit him on the soda. What kind of soda are we talking? Uh, dude, you're going to think he's a nerd. I got him into ginger ale. That's pretty classy. But, Man. But Does he drink it with for- one pinky in the air? Oh. That's fucking class, dog. A nine-year-old drinking ginger ale? Come <laughs> on, man. I conditioned him so that like, if I let him have a Mountain Dew, he's like, oh, my God, dude. It's party That's time great. with Dad. Dad's letting me fucking party tonight. This is so fucking sick. Um, my daughter does not drink soda. She hates how, it, how fizzy it is. And we kept her off at an early age. Uh, when they would see me drinking soda, if they were ever like curious about it and they asked and they wanted some, um, before, let me preface it with this. When I was a kid, another big fat thing for me, powdered iced tea mix. 
Oh, you're talking to two previous fatsos. Come on, yeah. the Four Seasons? Yeah. Let's do it. Dude, I love when you're in control, don't you? When you got the scooper. Bro. And not not, not oh, somebody out there it. in corporate telling yeah. me how much mix to put in. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. I like it when I am behind the wheel. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I? You know what I really loved about the powdered ice tea mix when you would open it and that little dust cloud would shoot oh. up. <laughs> get it into your lungs, dude. If there was enough of it, you could inhale it and then exhale smoke. Dude. You, could like, you could get it. It would coat your lungs on the way in, and then there would be nowhere else to coat it on the way out. So we would exhale it. Dude, mouth, <laughs> mouth breathing powdered ice tea mix was my <laughs> fucking shit. Dude, Sometimes you just like lift it up crack. an inch and drop it back on the counter so you get a second waft. That's dude, powdered iced tea, no parents home. That's fucking summertime, yeah. baby. Good night. <laughs> so the first time I uh, got uh, in shape was I, I realized how much sugar I was drinking every day of my life yeah, up until here. that point. Um, so I, I tried to keep my kid. I, I never wanted to have fat kids because I, I, would just, I always feel like my hangups are primarily from being poor and fat. Never want to have fat kids, and I just don't want to look at them. I don't want to look at a fucking fat kid every day. <laughs> you still here? Dude. I, I swear to God, when I see someone with, like, a fat kid, I'm just like, God, dude, that's got to be the worst. But they're I, so cute and adorable. I, I didn't feel cute and adorable when I was yeah. a kid. They, they don't feel cute and adorable, and they yeah. don't grow up to be cute and adorable. Okay? I still feel like a physical nuisance everywhere I go in my 100%. life. 100%. <laughs> they get up too much. 100%. I am currently a physical nuisance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm breaking chairs, beds, <laughs> fucking box springs, the whole nine yards. I think I shifted the toilet upstairs at my parents' house, although I kept it on the low. All of a sudden, it was, like, leaking a little bit underneath. She's like, the ring must be not placed in right. I'm like, yeah, the ring. It's a floating toilet, dude. It's not attached to anything. <laughs> That's the worst when you sit on a toilet and you can feel it go side to side a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Great, dude. I'm going to bust out nervous. the seams. Dude, my, my, my wife just bought a hammock, and we went down to, the like, along the Hudson, and we hung it. And she's like, do you want to get in? I'm like... I was a fat kid my whole life. We do not put ourselves in a position yeah. to embarrass ourselves in public like that. I'll I've try never, this in the comfort of my own home, okay? <laughs> I've never gotten in a hammock without my fucking ass cheeks just scraping back and forth on the ground. Sure. Everyone thinks they've hung it high enough. So at an early age, when, when my, my daughter tried to uh, try soda, I convinced her it was actually spider milk. Wow. What the hell is spider good. milk? There's That's no just something thing. you made up? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She'd be like, can I try some of that? I'd be like, oh, you want some of my spider milk? And then she'd go, ew. And it just lasted long enough that she lost any curiosity about it, never had any interest. It was a cute thing. I would make my wife laugh. Like, this little joke, right? Mm -hmm. She just never got into soda, and That's now she's great. a fucking athlete. It's perfect. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty tight. So what would they drink mostly growing up? Uh, water, milk, apple juice. Uh, they, my daughter did have a chocolate milk problem for a at while. At dinner? Yeah. Uh, milk yeah. at dinner is that's fucking trash shit. I walked him right into that. I know. Is that Foley's trash? A, Foley's is still currently a big milk for dinner kind of guy. I think my sister still does milk for dinner. That's trash. One hundred percent. No was, way she, around it. She was real big on milk with spaghetti. That's the big thing. Milk with I spaghetti. Hate I hate it. Why does this keep coming up on this podcast? Everybody, because it's, it's like, awesome. It's, it's so divisive. How could you possibly enjoy that? It's insane to me. Delish. You shouldn't, you shouldn't consume anything with milk that you wouldn't put in a milkshake. That's pretty good. Pretty, that's not that's true a, at all. That's a perfect rule. That is a perfect – what else? You, you, meatloaf, you shouldn't be drinking Ew, with dude. pizza. Nothing. Hey, listen, spider milk. Take it easy, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> and apple juice, that's the trashiest of all juices. Is no, it? No, Everyone, no, well, well, no. Are we talking about Martinelli's, that sparkling stuff? No, no, listen, time. I don't, I don't, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen Tim in a long time, but I can tell you from his answers thus far, he is not a Martinelli's kind of guy. I've never even heard of Martinelli. I don't know no Martinelli. Get out of here. Really? Yeah, I went to school with Steve Martinelli. <laughs> fucking triple. Shout out to Martinelli's apple juice, baby. When you no, want store the best. brand. Store brand. Mott's was all right. No, apple, apple juice is, apple juice is okay, but you shouldn't be drinking milk with fucking dinner. Never an apple juice family. Kids are stupid, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> This is dumb as shit. <laughs> well, we got the milk thing settled. Kippy, what else you got for him? I just got one more. Yeah. Um, but, but, uh, all right. Growing up and or currently, were you a Bagel Bites or Pizza Rolls family? I celebrated the uh, entire catalog. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Bagel Bites might have been like, you know, the bills were kind of light this month. Sure. That pizza is a rolls little, were a, yeah. a staple. Mm-hmm. Pizza I, rolls any, are tight. Do, do rich people eat foods that injure your mouth every single time you eat them? I don't think so. Because and I think if they do, there would be – they get some – because – they get some kind of organic version of it, like you know, Amy's pizza nuggets, organic, you know, coconut oh, yeah. flour. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you have to think like because they were fucking, you know, any frozen pizza or micro, you know, microwavable or anything. It depends on how long the families had money. I think because like when you, if a trashy person gets money, that just shows how trashy they can be without limit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like. I don't think, you know, like fucking wealthy, wealthy families probably aren't doing fucking bagel bites. Or they're they're doing them in the oven. For sure, the oven. Definitely not a toaster oven or microwave. Yeah, everyone I knew growing up had like, uh, they knew exactly the time that they would put it. Because the the time for each microwave was different. Uh Never what's on the box. Uh, I'm sure there's a million 90s bits about that. Microwave bagel bites. Yeah, dude. Damn. and with the pizza rolls, they were in the middle. They were ice cold up until like a, a perfect, like it had to be like three minutes and four seconds. Mm-hmm. At 3.05, they were the surface of the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at 3.03, they're frozen still. Can I say something? Shoot. This is going to sound real trashy. My move was always to try to shoot to get them a little bit underdone. Because when you bit into the nuclear hot part, if there was a little frozen piece Left inside, it would cool your mouth down. So you went medium rare on <laughs> pizza rolls. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were such an aristocrat. Wow, Jesus. Dude. I like my pizza rolls a little al dente. <laughs> <laughs> Slice it thin. I like them sliced thin. Dude, that is ultimate trash. Seriously, ultimate trash. I think having any any kind of nuanced opinion about this food at all is gross. One hundred percent. But that's what this whole podcast is. Exactly. Well, it's my life. <laughs> because I love I love that about hot pockets too. To have a nice little cold cold spot in the pocket, just to um, just to cool you down halfway through. Depending on what kind of pocket it was, for sure. That's a dangerous game. You bite into a mouth scolding hot pocket, and you're like, I know there's a cold front. If I just get a little <laughs> yeah. bit deeper in. Yeah, and you got sometimes you got to turn it around in your mouth to fucking oh, you know, yeah. over the temperatures. <laughs> Yeah, you're you juggling one You want it even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's holy shit. Um, all right, well, hold on. While we're kind of on this subject, what kind of frozen pizzas did you do growing up and now? Uh, I, I considered uh, Elio's like a, a blessing when I was a Okay. Kid. We were and a big I, Elio's I, house. I went back to Elio's recently. They hold up as far as, you know, Oh, fucking top shelf. Pizza? Hell yeah. Big all fan. Right. Big, we're raving we're, about we're, it for the whole quarantine. Yeah, yeah. we're big Elio's family. But g- growing up in uh, in the Philly, and in, I, it's probably true in most cities, we didn't do a lot of uh, frozen pizzas because you, you were never more than a 30-second walk from a slice. <laughs> from like a, a decent like a slice, 75 yeah. cent or a dollar slice. Mm-hmm. For um, sure. So I, I, you know, anytime I got a dollar, I was like, sick, I'm going to go eat pizza. <laughs> I love Over, frozen you know pizza. I mean? Did you guys have any hot candies when you grew up? Like very, like cool. Like I remember at one point we had the uh, watermelon-shaped lollipops hit the scene. Near my no, school, I don't remember those. Oh, you mean I thought you meant spicy. No, no, no. oh yeah, dude. I, dude come on, dude. Spicy eat some warheads. Candy. Yeah, eat some warheads. What are you? Dude, a I remember when warheads hit and when fucking airheads hit, and like you had to have them, and like everybody in school was having them. And when yeah. if you could get the white kind of airhead, that was, and you would like you would pack them down into the corner. You would ever do that? You like shake them, and it all moves into like a, a ball. No, it turns into a bite size. If you take the end of an airheads thing and shake it. It'll slide all the way down into the one end of the wrapper. That really? sounds like that sounds you like, have like a gusher knowledge. kind of huh. a little bomb, a little flavor bomb. Yeah, I, that's it. We had these gummy candies. I think they might have been Ninja Turtles, but they came in like a, a a clear, individually wrapped clear plastic tray, and you peeled the back off and ate them. Oh Those were a hit. Yeah. yeah, Those were a staple. Oh, and then fuck uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know what you're talking about with the watermelon slices. Um, they, they also had different flavors, but those were fucking huge. Those, and yeah, I was a kid of the, I was a child of the eighties, man. It all fucking happened. Those were, uh, those watermelon lollipops hit us around the time that kids started like making out. And I was just out in the cold on both. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look, they were like a quarter. You couldn't get a couple. Bro. 
I, first of all, you had to ration your quarters. My parents, was, I think my parents sent me to school with like 50 cents or it was like exact change for an Arctic Splash iced tea. I was just going to ask for you an Arctic Splash kid. Yeah. I mean, that's, first of all, if you started the entire podcast with Arctic Splash, it would have been over for me. Sure. I'm garbage. Dude. But uh, yeah, that and an individual pretzel. I remember going down to my cousins in. Hold on. Uh, that was lunch? In, no, that was like, they had um, snack time at school and you had to pay for snacks. Uh, it was a Catholic school and, uh, bastards. We, yeah. Right. They brought around a pretzel tray. You bought your pretzel and you know, that's so trash that that's what they go around and fill it off your schools with it's fucking soft. Arctic, Arctic splash. And Arctic salt. Splash and oh, salt and pretzel. Man, that's, that's like horse feed. Dude. <laughs> we would around. go, we would go to the, uh, the, the oh, corner store cause we would come in from the suburbs to go to my cousin's house in Port Richmond. So like a corner store was Damn. like crazy for us. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. I'm like, you can walk to go get candy and snacks. That's and, ultimate childhood autonomy. Oh uh, yeah, dude, for sure. For sure. So we walk in, I remember it was Yeagles on Gull and fucking on Gull and Allegheny. <laughs> and dude, when they closed, they were like, we're closing and or Arctic splash was like no longer. They were at something it was happening. They got, we into, went a, down they with, got into a fight. <laughs> we went down with crates to buy all of the Arctic Splash in the fucking store. That's how fucking garbage we were. I have uh, I have an Arctic Splash in a Ziploc bag on the top of my fridge that I had signed by UFC former UFC lightweight champion Eddie Alvarez. Jesus. He grew up in the neighborhood, and he was doing yeah. like a signing at like a Metro PCS around the corner from my house. <laughs> so I walked around, and I got him to sign an Arctic Splash, and now I have it. I forgot to empty it, so now like the liquid like made the thing swell in the heat. It's 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 gross. Is I that what you're banking it. on for the down payment on the new yeah, mortgage? Exactly. Is that yeah. you? It's <laughs> right next that, to my that, state that, quarters. <laughs> yeah, it's taking place in the quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Tim Butterly, buddy, this has been absolutely amazing. Kippy, what's your uh, what's your verdict here? Trash for sure. I mean, there's no <laughs> way around it. He was was we grew up way trashier, but he's making it. You know, he made a he made a right turn. He's raising a good family. He's got a stay at home wife. You know what I mean? She's his wife's got a fucking a Volkswagen that he needs a that he needs a front end on, but still. <laughs> 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 but fucking yeah, he's moving moving towards class for sure. Absolutely. Fair. Yeah. You're all class, Butterly. You're all class here. Good man. Um anything you want the folks out there to know other than to make sure that they check out the Dad Meat podcast with Tim Butterly and Mike Rainey? No, man, it's just really great to spend some time with you guys, seriously. Uh yeah, I man. I mean this would have been fabulous without recording it. Uh, congratulations on all your success. Congratulations on moving to fucking gas. You too, Thank buddy. You, Thank man. you very fucking much. Sick. We appreciate that. I, I've I've had the pleasure of following you guys all the way from Philly, and I I mean the 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 effort and uh, creative uh, what would you call it? it you've made you've made something very distinct, and uh, it's been really cool to watch it grow. And I got to see the work that you put in before. Are you garbage? And it's all been leading to this. And I, it just I don't know, man. It's I. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to uh, be here wow. with you guys for a little bit. But, go Thank on. you, man. That's Not so you. nice. I'm you all choked rule. up over here. Thank you so much. No problem, man. You're a good man, buddy. Thank you so much for uh, playing. Thank you so much for being on. Gang, make sure you check out the Dad Mead podcast. Follow Tim Butterly at on Twitter. At, yeah, at, I'm, I'm Tim Butterly on everything. That's Excellent. All. Very nice. Make sure you check him out. But you're the best. Thank you, Kippy. What do you got? Uh, just at Kevin Ryan Comedy on all social media. And also, if you haven't already, please rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. And also, full video available on YouTube. You can subscribe there. Thanks for listening. Yes, sir. And, gang, please do us a favor. Come along with us to the Gas Digital Network. If you want to sign up for Gas Digital, you can use promo code AYG, and you'll get a dollar fifty off your subscription, and you'll get a 14-day free trial. Use promo code AYG. We're so excited for the move, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Yep. Peace. Peace.